Over the winter, we built a gravel road off the driveway. That road was the beginning of Burn Peak's infrastructure, crucial to the growth and maintenance of our backyard trail system. On public trails, roads like these are known as double track, while the narrow trails with all the fun stuff are single track. Double track is used for everything from vehicle access to rescue, but double track roads also serve as connector trails to link single track together. Trails like Cakewalk are super fun when you ride them downhill. But getting back up involves anything but pedaling. So today, we're going to build double track at the very bottom of the hill, so we can pedal back up from the driveway. This is not as simple a task as one might think. If we do a little bit of zigzagging, it kind of hides the driveway, so to speak. Because if we cut a straight line, you see the whole thing. Yes, there are people here. We've had a couple of months now to assess the risk in our area and decided to try working together, apart. Kevin, it's, it's good to have you back. Yeah. Plus, we can't do this without James. Due to trail closures, his bike shop is pretty quiet, so he's got the time to help us out. Since this road will connect to a drive that I share with neighbors, we need to make the entrance not only durable but attractive. We're starting with a culvert, which is basically a pipe at the bottom that allows water to pass underneath the entrance. We can then span the trench with gravel. Lots of gravel. I had about 30 tons delivered and dumped in the auxiliary parking spot. We'll need all of it. Since the culvert is next to the driveway, we can run a half ton at a time with the tractor until the drainage trench is completely spanned. But gravel isn't the only material we're moving. James is building a retaining wall out of stone. This will keep the gravel from spilling out under the weight of itself and machinery. We'll improve the appearance of this entrance later on in the project. But for now, we need to clear a work area so we can stop blocking the driveway. Kevin bought this wood chipper on Craigslist so we could break down brush instead of leaving it in piles. We'll call it old dirty chipper. But we're not worrying about the stumps of the laurels we're clearing. In fact, we purposely leave them sticking way out of the ground. So James can grab them and pluck them out like carrots. The whole reason we started with that entrance and clearing was to get the excavator into the woods. It's a truly remarkable machine. The levers and buttons are like what you'd find on game controllers except they operate a terrifying mechanical arm in vivid 3D. With the flick of a wrist, you're plucking a stump from the ground or tossing a boulder like a piece of popcorn. This one is considered a mini excavator. Since the last project, I've been using United Rentals for stuff like this. And it's truly amazing how few questions they ask before delivering a mechanical death arm to your house. I just love being alive at this particular moment in history. In addition to loads of excavator experience, James has a deep understanding of dirt and what lies below it. Oaks take root pruning very well. What they do mind is compaction. The other tree, I'm not sure about, so I would rather go around it somehow. Clearly, it's open season on laurels, but we want to preserve all the deciduous trees that make up our canopy, including their root systems. It's necessary to dig down on the high side of the road to level it out. So to avoid the roots, we need to plan our route. So yeah, we can come right down through this jungly mess, keep both these trees, I'm gonna turn right and then come back up. So we've dug as far as we're gonna dig today. This is about 150 feet, and now James is digging a turnaround so that we can loop the gator around and come back out forwards. At the end of the road, James is digging a small cul-de-sac so we can make U-turns with the gator. 
This area in particular needs a fair bit of stone to retain the gravel and to prevent the hillside from sloughing. But then the biggest boulders that you have up there are probably going to need like four or five of them. So basically all the biggest boulders we have I should just bring out here? Yeah. With the excavator deep in the woods, we need to transport these boulders to the job site with the gator. Some are small enough for Alexander and I to lift, but we'll need to use the tractor for the bigger ones. Okay. It might seem easier to deliver these boulders with the tractor, but it's too top heavy to turn off the steep driveway onto the trail. So we're painstakingly shimmying each rock into the bucket lifting it level with the gator, and again shimmying the rock back out of the bucket and into the cargo box. James, you're not going to believe how big of rocks we have in here. <laughs> with the stone set and the trail mostly cut, it's time to get the excavator out of the woods and do the finishing touches on the entrance to make it look nicer and to hold up to the abuse from the gator. Once this is done, we'll be able to fill this area in and then we're going to take a couple of the bigger flatter stones out toward the edge, sink those into grade, that way we kind of keep the gravel off the asphalt. In areas where the tires tend to dig in, we're surfacing the entrance with flat boulders. This makes the tread pretty much indestructible. Yep. With the entrance taken care of, we can start running gravel to fill in the rest of the road. One, two, three. Scooping gravel into the gator is a little tricky since the tractor's bucket is actually larger than the cargo box. As a result, gravel gets everywhere and the gator takes a bit of a beating. I estimated we'd need about 60 of these loads to get the job done, but we ended up kind of overfilling the gator and getting it done with much less. Each time we dump gravel, it gets raked out across the trail, and then tamped with a whacker packer. With most of the gravel in place, James is headed home to work on his own driveway. He marked the areas where Alex and I need to add more gravel. Without James's knowledge, this project wouldn't have happened. But from here, it's mostly grunt work. Weeds and roots will naturally find their way onto the sides of the trail, but I'm planting ferns near the entrance to accelerate that. Not only do they look cool, but their roots also help hold the slope together. As for the remaining cleared brush, I'm spending the rest of the day with Old Dirty making it all disappear. actually need to add more gravel to the cul-de-sac at a later date and run the tamp again after a good rain. But our road is usable and for the first time ever we actually have a way to climb all of Burn Peak. This is officially the first full lap of Burn Peak that has ever been done. Yeah, right. yes. Oh man, we that got hiked awesome. through this. I forgot to mention, we never actually cut a trail out to this road. That's gonna happen some other time, but for demonstration purposes, we can find our way out there.
you, you have a hitchhiker <laughs> on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> you got a hitchhiker on your cables. Now for the climb. Berm Peak has the kind of climb that I like. Brutal and short-lived. You start on gravel and then make a right onto the shared driveway. This is the steepest part. Then you make another right onto my driveway. Yeah, we're not really that close. This is not much better. Finally, you get to the part we all know. And then after about three minutes of huffing and puffing, you're back at the top. Since the descent is about a minute, Berm Peak has a three to one climb to the scent ratio. Alternate line. Which is actually a lot of bang for your buck. With the addition of gravel grind, Berm Peak is looking more and more like a miniature version of a real trail system. Once we connect single track to this road, we'll finally be able to run laps. And on future builds, we'll be able to transport supplies with the Gator. I hope you enjoyed building this gravel road with us this week. And if you're ever in Brevard, North Carolina, be sure to visit James's shop, Squatch Bikes and Brews. If you're the kind of person who keeps clicking on more of these videos, just subscribe. It's easier, and when we connect single track to this road, you can join us again, from a safe distance. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.